Hello, everybody. It's Vinyl Richer. Vinyl Finds 103, I believe. This one's brought to you by Kern River Brewing Company, Dirty Hippie, Imperial Red Ale. Hope we can see that. I think this is brewed up in Kernville. Oh, shit. Whew. This is not what I'm used to drinking. I think this is brewed up in Kernville. It's just uh, north east of Bakersfield. These are all 60s, all psych and garage. And one is kind of a bad record. The music's not that bad, but. Anyways, I'll explain when I get there. Oh, tonight, everybody subscribe to the Grown, Grown Man Record Night. Metal Theologian is going to be on tonight's episode. So uh, check it out. If you can't check it out live, subscribe and you can watch it tomorrow. Should be pretty cool. Uh, Aaron, the Metal Theologian, is always good for a barrel of laughs. And I'm going to be watching it. It usually doesn't start until around midnight Eastern time. So it is kind of late for you Easterners. But anyways, let's start with these 60s albums. The first one I'm going to show is my other uh, Record Store Day purchase. Uh, my last video I said I had two, and this is the other one. The 31st of February. Now, I listened to this online before Record Store Day. And it was just a little too poppy for me. It's, uh, but I listened to it several times since, and it, it's grown on me. And, okay, it starts out with Sandcastles. It's a good enough song, but it's much more poppy than what I normally listen to. But the more I listened to this album, the more I liked it. Um, Broken Day. It's an acoustic guitar number with psych uh, flourishes. But the whistling at the end kind of ruins it. But the last three songs, Wrong, The Greener Isle, and Codeine, which is a Buffy St. Marie song. Man, those are great. Um, Wrong is a heavier song. The chorus has a almost a British psych sound to it. Um, the Greener Isle is another good song. A mid-tempo song. It's not real slow. But the Cody, man, that is a haunting song. It's psych. It's heavy. It's got organ. It's a really great song. Six minute and 17 second song. So for me, the side really, I mean, it starts off that regular poppy psych stuff. But it ended really heavily. And that's why I decided, you know, I'm going to get this. Um, side 2 starts with another light poppy song. Fluffy, and then uh, Pedestrians is another pop psych one, but then it turns into some good stuff again. Free, A Nickel's Worth of Benny's Hell, Pick a Gripe, and Cries of Treason. Um, Cries of Treason is another, it's the ending song on side two, and it's another really slow, haunting song. But yeah, really cool. Black Friday Record Store Day. Um, this guy here is Butch Trucks. Apparently he was one of the original drummers of the Almond Brothers. The drumming on here is nothing spectacular. It's not as spectacular as their outfits, man. Look at that shit. But yeah, I'm I'm glad I got it. And it's almost got me rethinking, man, should I get that free design one, you know? Because I, I kind of dismissed that one earlier. Because it's a pop, more poppy site than what I normally listen to. And it's on the Vanguard. Um, and I, I saw a copy of that Free Design Record Store Day album, so I might pick it up. Now this next one, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Derek Syke that showed this. And he said it's one of his favorite uh, Syke albums of all time. It's The Churches. This came out in 68, I failed to mention. This came out in 68 also. But yeah, this is a, it's an Israeli band. Um, I guess this is a repress. It's the originals. I believe only about 500 were made. This album is much more the type of psych that I like. I normally listen to. It's really good psych with uh, 
garage elements, fuzzy guitars, and comics. I think it's the middle song, the fourth song. It's a really good song. It's, it's probably my favorite song on side one. Um, the last song, Strangulation, is probably the weakest song on side one. It's kind of more of a regular rock, uh, boogie rock almost. But side two, holy moly. Side two is fantastic. It's, uh, the songs all run into one another. Um, it's like a... A continuous song you know they're all connected um, it's a more adventurous side it's a definitely a much more psyche side and I believe it's the second song subsequent finale that is a way tripped out but yeah side two is the kind of shit I really dig and it's a perfect side I mean I, it's great but yeah this is really cool Churches, um, I picked that up pretty cheaply, so look for it online. I highly recommend it. If you're into exploring good psych, this is one top notch. And the label is a label I don't really know, and I don't even know how to pronounce it. Head RZ. Hopefully you can see that. Really nice uh, polyline sleeve, so I don't have to re-sleeve this one. Okay, the next one here is uh, Strawberry Alarm Clock. This is their third album, I think. Um, it's dreamy pop. Kind of psyche. The first side, apparently five out of the six songs are cover songs or songs that the studio or the record label brought in and made them record they were not too happy about it and it's almost like kind of a concept thing going the, the songs all seem like they're kind of connected two of the songs are carol king numbers and the one a million smiles away i think that's the only one that's an original uh, by the band um, their second album didn't do as well as their first. Their first had that Incense and Peppermints, which I think is a classic psych song. The rest of the songs on that album aren't quite the same. I, I like that album. I did not like it back in the day. Um, the second album didn't do very well, and that's probably my least favorite, to be honest. So management kind of forced upon them a sound. But side two is a little more adventurous, and it's the the side that has all their original songs on it, and uh, it, it's way better. In fact, the last three songs, "Heated Love," "Love Me Again," and "Elegy," three, four, and fifth songs, are fantastic. And the last song is a uh, instrumental. So yeah, um, "Barefoot in Baltimore" is the first song on side two. That was a single, and I think it charted like in the 60s, like 67 or something. But yeah, this album also came out in 68, I didn't mention. The cover's really cool. It's not quite as psyche as this cover. Even the back, you know, the black and white drawing. But yeah, I I mean, if you see it, I recommend it. It's not as good as that Churchill's, but it's pretty cool. Side 2 is definitely better than Side 1. And it's on that really cool uni label. The next one, I think, is another 68. And it's Messages from the Status Quo on Cadet Concept. Like I said, it's another 68 album. Now, when this album starts, it's uh, Black Veils of Melancholy. It's almost like, man, this sounds like... Uh, Pictures of Matchstick Men, you know? And that's the thing about this. The guitar and the most of the songs make a lot of the songs all sound alike. I mean, in fact, when I first heard it, I thought, is this Matchstick Men first? You know, but it's not. 
I like this album, but if you don't like that Pictures of Matchstick Man song, you are not going to like this. Like I said, that guitar in that song is pretty much throughout, with the exception of two songs. Gentleman Joe, Sidewalk Cafe. That's the last song on side one, and it's more of a poppy song. And there was one song like that on side two, and it might have been the first song. I don't remember. This is signed by Gary Leash, or whatever. And right here he has an arrow, 1968. This cut only. And it's pointed to pictures of Matchstick Men. Now why he picks that one only, I don't know. Because a lot of these other songs sound very similar. I'm glad I have it. It's, again, I think it's a notch above the Strawberry Alarm Clock. But it's a lot of notches below Churchill's. And it's on that cadet concept label that I became aware of from uh, Electric Mud, that Muddy Waters. This was a chess label or offshoot. Kind of the, they were venturing into the more psychedelic rock. This next one is on the same, on par with uh, the churches. It's, a, it's great. And it's the 13th floor elevators, Easter everywhere. Um, this is a 67 album. This is a 1979 reissue from the UK. And it is in fabulous shape. I'm very happy with this. Um, this album is just as good as the first. Well, actually, no. It, it's better than the first. The songs are just as good. But the, it doesn't have that crappy-ass electric jug mixed up as loud as the vocals so you can really hear the vocals you can really hear the guitars i mean the electric jug thing's there and it's like like a background instrument and it, it actually is pretty cool you know it just uh really cool they do a really cool version of baby blue the bob dylan song um listening to baby blue now i might be going out on a limb here I mean, the Miles Bitches Brew and that In a Silent Way, everybody, especially In a Silent Way, well, let me make my point. They always cite James Brown and they always cite uh, Sly and the Family Stone as that funk influence, which is apparent on Bitches Brew and some of those other Miles Davis albums in the early 70s. But In a Silent Way, you can hear, I mean, I never really paid attention to it, but when I was listening to Baby Blue, I was going, wow, this this kind of music had an influence on Miles Davis. That cool, airy feel of uh, In a Silent Way, I think was heavily influenced by the psychedelic bands at the time. And this is fantastic, dude. I don't know if I'm talking out of my ass. But whatever. And this is what the label looks like. Like I said, it's a 1979 uh, reissue. And it's in fantastic shape. Um, there was a 79 reissue, a U.S. reissue too. But that one sounds fantastic. Now this next one is a Love, their first album with the hit My Little Red Book, which is one of my favorite songs on this album. Um, a Message to Pretty, Sign DC, maybe my favorite. But yeah, this is a really good album. Um, the first three love albums I think are all really good. Um, the cutout here doesn't look too bad, but on this side they did a fucked up job. But uh, yeah, this is my first, I have a best of love. So this is my first uh, album. It is stereo. I think this album probably would be better in uh, mono, but that's cool, you know. I'm not gonna sweat it. And it's on this red Electra. It's not a first pressing by any means, but uh, it's early pressing, probably 70s. I don't know. I'm not like a label expert. Now these next four. 
Yeah, I have a shitload of records to show. It's a series that uh, Dead Wax 66 showed way, way back. And I bought um, Volume 3 because it was the only one that was offered on Bomp Records, the website where I buy a lot of my garage comps. And I liked it so much. It's unissued 60s garage acetates. And this one is called Get Off of My Back. I like that number three so much. I went went ahead and went to the Norton Records website and I ordered the other the other volumes. So yeah, this is volume one. Get off of my back. Uh, that's what the label looks like. The Norton label. This volume two is She Was So Bad, Unissued 60s Garage Acetates, Volume Two. I don't need to show the labels, they're all the same. I've had enough unissued 60s garage acetates, volume four. Like I said, I had number three already. And the most recent one was volume five. You tore my brain, unissued 60s garage acetates, volume five. I think when uh, Dead Wax 66, Randy showed them, there was only four volumes. This one, well, this is 2010, so. I'm full of shit. Never mind. And it's on the Norton. I already showed it, but showed it again. Now, I said this is going to be all 60s. I got one here. I believe this came out in 1970, but I'm showing it. Um, it's Traffic, John Parley, Barley Corn Must Die. Really cool gatefold. This was actually the first uh, traffic album that I ever bought back when I was a kid in the early 70s. And after that, I bought the High Hill Boys, the Spark of the High Hill Boys, and then the next one after that, and then the live one. I didn't buy the 60s traffic until maybe 10 years ago or so. The traffic that I was always into was the 70s one. And it's just uh, recently that I started getting into Psych, and uh, that's when I discovered their other ones. But anyways, this is the only album that I really needed. I don't have that that last one with the Eagles, or Eagles Dare, or I don't know, whatever, whatever it's called. I have it on CD, and if I remember right, I didn't really care for the production on that one. Not like these. Man, that is some strong shit. It's real hoppy. It says Red L. Man, that's a big ass bottle too. I'm gonna have a hard time finishing that. But yeah, Glad, Freedom Rider, Empty Pages, fantastic side there. Stranger to Himself, John Parley, Barley Corn Must Die, and Every Mother's Son. I really dig this album. And it, I'm glad I finally have it. Now I can do a traffic video showing all my traffic but I promised someone I was gonna do uh, actually I promised a couple of people I was gonna do an alien sex fiend so that might be my next video and my last one here Dead Wax, I'm gonna blame this on Dead Wax 66 too he was playing this on one of his live uh, streams and it's a Charles Manson album it's the same songs that are on that lie album came out in 70 I believe it was recorded uh, mostly in 68 I think two songs were recorded in 67 and he was playing it and I was man that's a, a lot better than what I remember that shit sounding like you know and uh, so I bought it in fact I went on my phone as I was watching his live thing and I bought it for $22 Free shipping off of Discogs. Now this is, I think, from Spain. Yeah, Madrid, it looks like. It's really, uh, it's a good album. I mean, it's not a great album, but it is good. Um, Charles Manson actually he sings pretty good. His guitar playing is not great. Uh, Look at Your Game Girl, the first song is pretty cool. The second song, Ego, is really, it's got some overdub instruments on it it's pretty psychedelic mechanical man that's a trippy song 
it's just really good. And then it has I'll Never Say Never to Always. That's the one with the Manson girls singing. It's like pretty creepy. But yeah, I I bought it. You can hate me. That's why I'm showing it at the end, man, because I don't want to. I know a lot of people, they don't watch the whole damn video. And I figured the ones that do watch the whole video, they're, they're, the, they're the ones that will not hate too much. But this is what the label looks like. Um, I think originals, they, don't, they didn't print that many. A couple of thousand. And I believe only like 300 sold. And then, I don't know. They made a deal with some distribution company on the East Coast, and who knows what happened to those originals. But yeah, they're expensive. But anyways, that's it. Quite a few albums, more than I normally show. Um, check out Grown Man Record Night tonight. Uh, Aaron, the Metal Theologian, is going to be there. You can even type in comments as the show's going on. And if you don't watch it, just subscribe. I know they were trying to get up to 500 subs. I'm not sure if they got there or not. But anyways, don't be a dick. Take care, everybody.